today's lectures. You can give yourself an applause. As you know, we still have breakfast that will be served for another few hours in, the, in front of Europa Hall. You can also get bar cafe, which means you can also get uh, doping from really good coffee. And of course, we'll have perfect lectures. We start with our first guest speaker that we already had here on stage in the panel discussion on the first day on Wednesday. He's a child of Sachi and Sachi. He bounced through Sydney, Warsaw, Moscow, Vienna, Berlin, and now Geneva. He will be speaking as a pioneer of truly integrated communication in the screen age. He'll guide you through how to progress from creating direction to curating brand image, message, experience, and reputation. Please give a warm welcome and huge applause for our first guest speaker of the day, Executive Creative Director of Sachi & Sachi, Global Chief Creative Officer for GlaxoSmithKline and Deutsche Telekom, Mr. Jason Rumeka. Utilizing five or six different countries. 
Um, they put it out on, on the internet with no seeding, just the power of a really big idea and a very emotional story. There was no seeding. Within one day, it became the most shared video in the world. I guess what's most extraordinary about this particular case is that two weeks later, after millions of people had, had seen it and many people had written about it, the agency received a second email and it was from the mother who wrote the very first email. And she said, um, I'd like to thank you for, for creating this film. I'm looking forward to meeting my son now. And I think that is one of the most powerful examples of how our communication can be very direct and to create an emotional uh, connection in a heartbeat. So here we are at the Golden Drum. And uh, I, again, I feel again privileged to have been a member of this year's jury. I believe there was something around 1,200 uh, entries, or maybe 1,300 entries, which were sent through. I got to see over 400. Uh, it is not my first Golden Drum. The first time I was in Golden Drum was in 1995, so that does tell you roughly maybe how old I am. And it was a very different time when... Young. Uh, pardon? How young. How young I am, exactly. Botox works, everyone, yeah. Um, so, at that particular time, you know, uh, Dragon Sakant was a driving force here in the region. Yeah, unfortunately he's passed away. Uh, uh, there was also some incredible things happening here around Piran, where you would have these pop-up uh, uh, kind of performances of Goran Bregovic with his underground uh, orchestra, which was absolutely amazing. And uh, another thing that, that was uh, very relevant at the time was that Slovenia was the most uh, creative country in uh, all of the new Europe uh, at the time. So that was kind of cool. Uh, now, a few years ago, I had a, a boss of mine uh, called me, uh, he, he said, uh, what do I see? I said, you know what, Jason, you're a very good uh, curator. And I was like, what? Are you insulting me? Yeah, is this an insult? Uh, I've been called an account man before, which is to any account people in the room. I, I apologize, but for me, that's insulting. Sometimes I get called a planner. It doesn't go down very well with me either, but yeah, I take, what, I take any compliment I can get. The curator thing was really weird, but the more I thought about it, um, the more I kind of understood that actually what I do, or what I've been doing in, um, in the last 10 years or so, really is curation. So I'm taking, looking at different touch points, and I'm looking at different messages across different touch points. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pulling them together to tell one brand story, very much like a curator does in a museum. So a curator in a museum has a message that they want to put out, and they may tell that message through sculpture or through a video installation. Yeah, an oil painting. They may all come from different people, but there is one kind of message uh, which, which comes out with that. Now, this here, if you have a look, this is a snapshot of the things I get to do every day. Years ago, I thought I'd lose my job because I didn't know how to do a panel. Yeah? But these are the things I do every day. I do web films, uh, video games, comic books, console games, merchandise, and e-commerce sites, poster and print ads, impromptu events, as you've seen with the T-Mobile stuff and the Deutsche Telekom stuff. Music festivals, I do those too. I do interactive billboards, QR code, base posters and print ads, Facebook applications, iPhone applications, augmented reality, and yes, I do TV, yeah? Um, but it's not really that important. It's always very nice. And for me, I always try and, every time I use the word TV, I always try and replace it with all your visual because there is so much more that you can actually do with film. film uh, Thing. But every time I use one of these touch points, I use them like levers, I fly a campaign, so sometimes I'll have more PR, and sometimes I will have less TV, but I will literally fly the campaign on the go in real time, because what's happening out there is that we are subject to so many changes out there um, every second of the day. <laughs>
I love this idea. Um, it creates, it changes behavior, yeah? As does, uh, well, this is a little bit different, it changes the way people talk about you, right? La noche es difícil para los hombres comunes porque existimos nosotros, los hombres atractivos, hombres que con una sola sonrisa probamos la mirada de todas las mujeres y hundimos las esperanzas del resto de los mortales. Por eso Andes tuvo una idea increíble: sacarnos a nosotros de la noche y regalarle al resto de los hombres la noche más justa. Para los hombres, más facheros del dos un falso casting. Nos citaron un sábado a las 10 de la noche para protagonizar el más espectacular comercial de cerveza. Para protagonizar el... Bueno, o sea que mientras nosotros estamos acá... O sea que mientras nosotros estamos acá, sin saber lo que está pasando, porque a cada uno le tocó un pedacito suelto de texto. Porque a cada uno le tocó pedacitos sueltos de texto. Que después un editor le daba sentido. El resto de los hombres, normales, Está disfrutando de una noche libre de nosotros. Libre de nosotros. Libre de nosotros. CICD, where everything had to be in its place. And they, they kind of, in the, let's say, in the spirit of integration, they freed up the CICD, which is a lot looser as well. So even if it doesn't look the same in different touch points, it definitely feels the same from the brand. The problem is, is that many places now, um, they don't have uh, a United State of Creativity. It's actually a United State of Vanilla. And I actually find much of the work quite bland out there. And the reason why I find it so bland is that most people are doing something which I call matching luggage. Don't you like my little animations? Um, anyway, so matching luggage to me is that, that horrible situation when you have a client who makes you film a TV commercial, you take exactly the same photo from a scene in the TV commercial, and you put it into a print ad, then you stretch it again on billboard, but actually it was shot in, you know, it was, uh, it was shot vertical. Yeah, so it doesn't really work on landscape. And then you try and resize that again to fit a really shitty banner. Yeah? That for me is, is actually really poor communication. I think it's, it's, poor, it's poor leadership from, from clients. And also, uh, I think it's agencies need to push back on that because that's not where the future is. Yeah? Um, the thing that we have to remember with matching luggage, uh, what we do is we take away all the sex appeal from our brand. Yeah? And we know that um, the advertising agencies themselves don't build your brands, and actually marketing departments don't build brands. Yeah? The people who build the brands are the consumers, and the way they do it is with the conversations they have around your brand. And those conversations are only going to happen if it's inter interesting. It's not like anybody goes home at night time and says, hey baby, did you see that demo? I did that five seconds. Did you like? Did you like the you know the special stamp on that demo? Yeah, it's not that. Things have to be interesting for them to work. Yeah. What we what we're competing out there with is like uh, pornos and cat videos. Le buzz de la semaine. Eh bien oui, car l'industrie du X a toujours un coup d'avance en ce qui concerne les films. Mais là, il va bosser. Mark Dorsey, the undisputed king of adult films in Europe, has a problem. Sex sells, but sex is hard to sell. Because online, everyone gets it for free. 
So, why do people pay 9 euros and 99 cents a month to mark high quality streaming adult films if they don't see what high quality actually is? That's why Mark decided to give an exclusive free access to his entire library. But under that one little condition to keep their hands on the keyboard. Presenting <laughs> Hands Off. They loved it so much that they tried hard to put their hands to use again to hack it. The P is on the A, the S, the P, and the L. You lose it, and you can profit of the film for the And the media loved it too. Carton total, le trafic du site a été multiplié par 27, le nombre d'abonnés sur le site multiplié par 50, plus de 4000 mentions sans les mains sur le réseau social Twitter, 7 heures dans, en sujet numéro 1 en France hier. Bref, c'était le carton total au niveau de la promo. Et bien, Mark n'était jamais so pleased to use his own hands. <laughs> Try now, the hand love experience. They certainly were talking about that, yeah? As they were talking about this. When people sit down to eat a hamburger, the last thing they want to be thinking about is two guys having sex. In 2014, we invited people to try the most controversial hamburger in history. Tonight, some of the stories that are on right now online, Twitter, Burger King. Proud It's called the Proud Whopper. Introducing the Proud Whopper. So like it's a gay burger or is it, do gay people even eat? Yeah, it's about time. People wondered what was so different about this Whopper. You want to try the Proud Whopper? Yeah. What is that? The Proud Whopper? And what is it? Like, it really does taste different. It means it's more like sweeter. But in reality, the Proud Whopper was just like any other Whopper. We are about to say it's a fake burger. Our special pride wrapper became a souvenir, a collector's item for sale to the highest bidder, a badge of hope. The Pride Whopper took over social media and mass media publications. It gathered over 1 billion media impressions worth $21 million of earned media, 7 million views, 450,000 blog mentions, and became the number one trending topic on Facebook and Twitter in one week. We're all the same inside. That's a wonderful sentiment. I'm proud of being straight, you know, how about that? Can I be proud to be straight? We all want people to accept us for who we are. So Tyler, should you work at Burger King? In the end, the Proud Whopper became more than a hamburger. It became a proclamation of equality. It makes me feel supported, it makes me feel proud, and it's just a burger, but I mean, it's baby steps the whole way. I think this rapper means that we all have the same rights. So these guys could have, you know, I don't know, um, put out a big rainbow flag in front of their store could have actually really made a new burger and gone through all those kind of logistical problems to make it happen, a lot of investment. What they did was, is they actually just made their Whopper interesting. They had a very simple idea and they limited, let's say, the changes they needed to make to the packaging. And that was really cool. And it was so interesting that people were talking about it. You know, interesting is currency of our times, but it's very hard uh, to be interesting when we live inside this VUCA world. VUCA, this is a term that the Pentagon uses about the, the kind of world that we live in. 
So you have to remember, and particularly when you're getting briefs from marketing departments, or particularly as creators when you're going back to your, uh, to, to your account teams, etc., is that the work that you're making actually has, uh, let's say, there's many other things happening out there. So for example, we're living in a volatile world where you know, we have all, of the, all the war in Syria, the Russians have started bombing in now. Last year, the, the uh, situation and the ongoing situation with Russia and Ukraine. We then have um, an uncertain time. Again, we have, there's a lot of disease going about. Ebola was a big topic last year. Uh, we live in very complex times as well. So there are seven billion people on the planet. How in the future are we going to give them fresh water, clothes, shelter, etc.? Even now with the refugees who've already made it to uh, Germany, those Syrian refugees who've made it to Germany, how are we going to integrate them? Yeah, and how are we going to give them warm clothing to get through this winter? I think this winter is going to be terrible. And again, these VUCA times that, that the consumers are, are up against, they're also very ambiguous. There were times when banks were really solid places, but look, a few years ago, all the banks went arse over tip. Yeah? So frankly, we are living in really strange times, and that all competes for attention um, with your communication. Uh, and the, the problem is, is that inside this VUCA world, many clients and many agencies are still working in a very old-fashioned way. Um, I call this the era of new, newer, faster, stronger, all of these superlatives. I don't give a shit about that, really. And we're still using old, in some cases, old principles of uh, grabbing attention and interrupting people, informing people. I think uh, I have to click through some more. Clients are always talking about a return on investment, yeah, because you know that's obviously important for clients, but I think that's already outdated. I'll come with a solution in a second. And again, clients are pumping the markets. If they've seen that they haven't kind of pillaged one area of the market, they go after it, yeah. And I think you know there's there's no kind of foresight in there. We're we're not behaving in a way which is going to be sustainable for communication. For pe it's not going to be sustainable for, for people's attention. So what I like to believe. I love, really like that effect, yeah, good flames. I like to believe we're in a super good world, yeah? Which means that we have to enhance the way that we talk to people, yeah? So we need to be vibrant, yeah? So we have so many different opportunities with technology to, to give life to our communication, yeah? To give color, to give sensation to things. Um, we can be unreal. Now, I remember when I was a kid, you know, watching Star Trek, and the concept of teleportation was unreal. Right now, there was a particle which was uh, teleported uh, 123 kilometers in Switzerland. So teleportation is a reality. So we are living in unreal times. Never before could we use technology in such a way. Um, it's crazy, yeah? So if you look at Kim Kardashian's ass, or maybe Kylie Jenner's, Kylie Jenner's, uh, you know, uh, naked shots recently. Again, those are crazy times and we can either use pop, pop culture to help fuel our stories, but don't forget we're also competing against them in these super booker times. And then there are our astounding things. Um, I have to say, I think the Caitlyn Jenner uh, cover on, on uh, Vanity Fair is something which just astounded the world and actually you can already see between Conchita, people like Conchita and Caitlyn Jenner, they are actually pushing a brand new agenda and, and increasing people's tolerance. Um, and in this super VUCA world, what, what the way that you then uh, have to behave is you have to behave in real time. Yeah, it, everything's happening now. I want it now. You go online. E-commerce is about clicking here and buying now. I want it delivered tomorrow. Amazon Prime will deliver it to you tonight. Yeah, and there, you know, when you're in this age of now. We have to allow people to participate with our brand. Now, participation used to be in the advent of social media. Participation used to be something which was quite mechanical, yeah? I upload a picture of myself and do something. No, participation is about giving consumers, um, I guess, a say in how your brand goes forward, yeah? If you think about Coca-Cola and the old story about the Coke people, uh, changing the formula and people bringing that back. That was, you know, and then allowing consumers feedback to bring that brand back. That was, a sen uh, 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 in a sense, participation. Um, inspire, so we need to be telling new stories. Do you know how often I, and I work on an international level, I see work and, and actually I've seen it before, yeah, and someone says, yeah, it happened in that country there. But actually with the age of the internet, everybody sees everything. So being original, 
uh, is, um, is key to inspiring people. So again, we need to do that in the age of now. We need to interact more with people. Now here's the, my answer to return on investment. It's return on involvement. By actually involving consumers in your brand, you get a really high return. And the return is advocacy, it's love marks. Yeah? So if, pe if, if, if people are, are allowed to sit at your table, yeah, they will actually talk nicely about you because you shared, their, uh, you shared your experience, you shared your brand with them. And then the last bit here is you can create movements from that. And I've seen this, we do this now, we, do, we, we have movements of people online and we're, trans you know, we're growing them into offline movements as well. It's very powerful. 550 million litres of orange juice are sold every day in the world. Half of that in Europe. The competition is fierce, every brand claiming its juice to be the best. But one thing is for sure, no orange juice is better and healthier than a freshly squeezed one. And what proves the freshness of a fresh orange juice better than the exact hour and minute the juice was made? That's why Intermarché, one of the largest supermarket chains in France, has launched the freshest fresh orange juice brand ever created. A juice brand whose name is the exact time the juice was made. Yes, the name of the brand changes every minute with every bottle of orange juice made. Now, discover the 8.36 a.m. fresh orange juice brand. The 8.36 a.m. fresh orange juice brand was created at exactly 8.36 a.m. The oranges were squeezed at 8.36 a.m. The bottle was labeled at 8.36 a.m. and brought to the dedicated aisle. And the process was exactly the same for the 8.37, 38, 39 a.m. brands and so on. They were made live in store to adapt to demand and avoid any waste. This new fresh orange juice brand was launched with a whole integrated campaign, making fun of our competitors and their pseudo-traditional way of making Discovery orange juice. juice unequaled since 5.43 p.m. Born out of the courage and obstinacy of a woman who squeezed and squeezed for endless seconds to create this extremely fresh juice envied by the whole world since 5.43 p.m. People like the freshness of the juice, so much so that in the first three days of the campaign our fresh orange juice sales multiplied by 4,600% per store and overall in-store traffic increased by 25%. And the media like the freshness of the idea. 50 million media impressions were generated in the first three hours of the launch and the hashtag Le Jus Le Plus Frais, the freshest juice ever, has spread quickly over the web. Finally, at the very moment you're watching this video, a whole new brand of orange juice is actually being created. The freshest fresh orange juice brand ever made. So if there's anything more relevant in the age of now, like as an example, I think that's great because that just shows real-time production of a product. And I, I think that's amazing. It's relevant as well for orange juice because everyone wants fresh orange juice. And one of the things I struggle with is clients uh, who will remain unnamed. Some people test for 42 weeks, yeah? I think that's absolutely ridiculous. You will never get anything in the age of now in 42 weeks. In fact, I have clients who, at the end of last year, were really excited about me working on a brief for 2017. I do not bloody know what the world is going to look like in 2017, so how can I work on it two years in advance?
few things I love about that piece. Number one, if you've ever worked on Panthers, um, you never, you always call it bowel movements, BM. Yeah, this is the very first time in the history of Panthers that they actually talk about poo. Yeah, which I think is kind of kind of cool. But what's what's quite sweet is again by adding a ta hashtag on there, which may seem a very small thing. Yeah, what they've done is they've allowed consumers to engage with them in real time. So if you have a look at hashtag poo phase, yeah, you'll see a whole stream of different mothers who've actually and fathers who've been taking uh, photos of their baby. So it's quite nice. It's an easy way to to open up um, to, to actually make it a little bit more integrated. Yeah. Um, now, when in the age of now, uh, nobody is waiting for your idea. Yeah, nobody's waiting for your genius idea. There are thousands of people out, out, out there with them. So what you have to do is actually, you have to have a hundred of them and move with them now, yeah? And see which one floats to the top. I think there are too many people who kind of wait for a client to buy something or wait for an account person to sell something or are just really fixated on their one idea, yeah? You've got to do everything that you can to actually make it happen. And that doesn't come from talent, that comes from hard work and obviously a lot of luck. Yeah, a lot of luck. Like here. Two thousand fourteen marked the one hundredth anniversary of the first Leica camera. Compact and easy to handle, it helped bring photographers out of the studio and into real life. To celebrate the centennial and also the opening of Leica Gallery in Sao Paulo, we developed SoundLab, a project to recreate the sounds of some of the most important pictures ever taken with a Leica. First, extensive historical research helped us better understand the context behind each of these iconic pictures. After that, we started to imagine which sounds were heard by each photographer while taking these photographs. These sounds were then recorded in 3D binaural technology to create tracks with a sensation of 360 degree sound and give listeners the feeling of being in the photographer's shoes at the decisive moment. To listen to the 3D sound experience, Visitors were invited into a container placed inside the gallery. There, they could put on headphones and be transported in some of the greatest photographs of all time. Also, to mark the occasion forever, 100 box sets containing vinyl records with the tracks and special posters were sent to clients and to the press. All the records, posters, record sleeves, and leather boxes were 100% handcrafted just like every like a camera is since 1914 until today. After all, these 100 years and their memory should be kept alive forever. So someone probably said, we, we can't create sound for photographs, yeah? And, uh, and probably someone said, no, I can. And that's, that's the result of what they did there. Hello, America. I'm Alan Cumming, head of the Department of Sexual Abstinence. Did you know that the FDA recently changed its policy to ban gay and bisexual men from giving blood for life? Now, if you're gay and you want to save lives, the FDA will let you. You just can't have sex for an entire year. That's right. 365 days of celibacy. Introducing the Celibacy Challenge. So let's get to it. Let's start saving some lives. And to help you abstain from any naughty temptation, here are some fully approved activities that are guaranteed to make your year without sex fly by. Take a pottery class. Practice yoga. Learn carpentry. Work out. Join a civil war reenactment. Clean your house. Learn arts and crafts. 
Prices for New Year's. Or there's another option. Sign our petition. Then share this video to pressure the FDA to change its questionnaire so donors are screened based on their exposure to risk and not their sexual orientation. So no matter who you are, you can save lives. So, I mean, ideas is one way, having lots of ideas uh, across different touch points is, is one way of helping you achieve a more integrated uh, state of creativity. Um, the other thing is about breaking down silos, and frankly I, I, I think this starts in the workplace, in the office, and uh, I hear too much about, oh, someone's a digital creative, or, uh, you know, we need to get that person in, and they're all kind of like these special disciplines. I don't think that way, yeah? So I think well, the very first step to integration in terms of communication is about looking at how, who's inside your office, where they sit, and who interacts with uh, e who interacts with one another in each meeting, yeah? Um, same goes for clients, yeah? I think um, I had, I heard one client story where only recently they hired someone with digital expertise. Yeah? Now in a world where everything is digital and nothing is digital, I, I just find that's very old fashioned. You just need to be replacing people, and I'm sorry I use the word replacing people, who have and and skills, who can do uh, what we could do in the past and who enhance um, the port your, your portfolio of skills in the agency with new things, yeah? Um, the, for me, the idea will always be king here. So if you have a look at this piece here, we'll take, I often take an idea, uh, set it in the middle of the table and I'll have a PR person there. Um, I might have a shopper marketing person there because if that's, that, that, that's who I need at the mix, yeah? Uh, I might have a strategic planner, I might have a media person there. But all the time when the idea is king, I have them working on the, on the problem at the same time. Now sometimes I do this through a tribe, yeah? A tribe is a two or three day uh, kind of hothouse which, which I do in, in different places with different nationalities as well. But again, when you are at a round table and the idea is king, no one says that TV is more important, yeah? When you're at a round table, the wonderful thing is, is that suddenly you might be able to launch a campaign through, I don't know, a piece of in-store, yeah? So it makes it really exciting, but allows the ability to integrate, uh, it allows the ability to integrate grow. most exposure to sunlight turn into actual ovens. In partnership with the Buenos Aires Ministry of Urban Development and Google Maps Technology, we developed a software program capable of measuring the sun's impact on every home in the city. By logging onto our website and entering an address, residents could calculate the exact amount of hours their homes were exposed to sunlight. The accumulated hours were then converted into a discount toward the purchase of a BGH air conditioner. The longer the exposure, the bigger the discount. HIV positive people from different backgrounds were willing to donate blood. With the help of Harvard and Innsbruck universities, we then injected the blood into the printing presses and created a special edition of the Vanguardist HIV Heroes issue. Every word, every line, every picture, every story carried the blood. The magazine was sealed in a plastic envelope, challenging readers to first break the seal and help break the stigma. Touching the magazine is as safe as shaking the hand of an HIV positive person. Still, reactions varied.
magazine will hit newsstands. The cover is printed with ink containing blood from HIV-positive people. The HIV-positive issue was immediately picked up by media around the globe. Now we have a magazine in a plastic cover, but they are telling us that we can't get HIV. HIV made the headlines again, and conversations are being reignited every day. So, this obviously, you know, this execution raised a lot of fear within my company. Yeah? Um, the holding company uh, was not a fan of this. Uh, I had to sign off my job uh, if this all went wrong. And frankly, I was very glad to have that killer Rolodex to, to, to have a PR agency and PR partner to work with, yeah? So there is a lot of fear out there. And it's not just with this project that I've found fear. Sometimes clients are, without their 42 weeks of, uh, you know, testing it to, to hell, they're, they're so fearful. So my advice here is to don't fear fear, yeah? Um, and there's a lovely quote that I use from James Cameron. Uh, he talks about, when he was talking about Avatar, he says, if you set your goal ridiculously high and it's a failure, then hell, you're going to fail above everyone else's successes. And that's kind of how I come to work every day, yeah? So I'm probably a real coward in my private life, but in my professional life, definitely playing with other people's money, I, I, I am, I'm quite courageous, yeah? <laughs> uh, but anyway, so... Um, the thing that you all have to ask yourselves every day is, is there a predator inside you? Yeah, I think the lion is not about a calm lion because I think that's too cliche. But very often we need to be seeking out the opportunities that are there in our market. With, with integrated campaigns, you can curate anything. Yeah? Your, your, your creative opportunities are really, really high, but you have to work for it. Yeah? You know, you have to ask yourself, you know, am I going to go the distance? Am I going to fight for the idea? So, this I love. This is from my friends Luca and Luca. I'm going to leave you with two last um, cases. Yeah? I do, before I step off the stage, I just want to say thank you to, um, to Mitya Petrovic, who, who had been here as a guest, to Luchka Perian, who's like a mum of the jury, um, to Alish and Petra and Itzo here on the things, because they've been sitting in the darkness for a few days. Um, and uh, they've really helped the presentation come together. Uh, obviously, Paola, Xavier, and Laurent, who, uh, Laureat, who are uh, my designers, who helped with a really cool presentation. So thank you for having me today. I'm going to leave you with two things. The first is one I really, really love. And the second one is, I just think it's the purest form of integration that anyone could ever have. Yeah? So I'll do this one. <laughs>
biggest fans with the biggest social media following and made them our media channel without paying them a cent. With the history of innovation, we took the tweets from the night and began growing them on our farm in Coomer, New South Wales. We're using our robotic technology to mark out the actual outline of the letters. They wanted us to just write tweets in the paddock with uh, grass. I thought, yeah, why not? We'll give it a go. From there, our fine wool merino sheep grazed on our messages of support. No, no, they've never eaten any Twitter before, but I'm, well, I'm sure they're very keen to get in, into it and um, do their bit for Australian sport. When, when word got out that there's been words uh, growing in a paddock, um, and particularly tweets, now most farmers here in the Monero would even know what a tweet was, but uh, you don't get me wrong, they all love their sport. The wool was then crafted into suits for the team. The celebrities were sent our story, and once they began retweeting to their millions of followers, the nation soon learned as well. The Socceroos will literally wear the nation's sentiments on their sleeves, with the team's official suits infused with fans' messages of support. This produced exceptional results, 